Welcome to a little bit of Calm and Crazy. My name is Jennifer and today I am so excited to be able to share with you six new Dollar Tree DIYs that can add a little bit of pop of color for spring or summer into your home. Perfect for you or as gifts for friends and family. If you are new to my channel and you love easy DIYs, budget decor, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And let's go ahead and jump on into today's projects. For my first project, I am just using a Dollar Tree basket. If you don't have one, no worries. More than likely, you have another basket lying around that you can do something similar with. And I'm just taking a little bit of rope in order to jazz that up. With the rope, I'm taking a little bit of hot glue, putting a dab of hot glue and putting the rope into that and holding onto it because hot glue does not necessarily want to stick to plastic. And then as I take the rope around, I secure the rope over the part that I originally hot glued on and then I continue to wrap around. At the end, in order to secure it, I place the hot glue on the basket and onto the rope and that way I'm securing the rope to both parts because the rope is going to secure better to itself than it actually does to the plastic basket. I repeated the exact same thing to the other side and I absolutely love how this basket turned out. I think it is super cute and just a little elevated. For my next project, I'm using a glass candlestick and a bowl. Of course, this is from the new Paisley Summer set that Dollar Tree has out. But if you don't have this one, just grab another bowl that you have in your set that you happen to really love the colors. I'm also using the spray paint that I have used in other projects. I was lucky enough to get it at Walmart on clearance and I think it's a beautiful color and that is what I use to spray paint my candlestick with. Once the candlestick was completely dry in order to protect it, I went in with the Waverly Clear Wax, brushed that on, wiped off the excess and then let it sit overnight to dry. When it was completely dried, I went in with some more rope. Now the rope is actually like three pieces braided and so I actually only took one piece of that three pieces and I used a little bit of hot glue to start it, wrapped it around three times and finished it with some hot glue just to add a little bit more texture and I don't know, I just thought it looked better. So I added some rope onto the candlestick. So I'm using some E6000 in order to attach the candlestick onto the bowl, but before I can do that, I wanted to make sure that I removed the sticker so that the candlestick and the bowl were actually attaching to each other and the sticker was not interfering with that. And to get that sticker off, I just used my heat gun to make sure that I could get that off. And then I could attach the candlestick right on. Again, just let it set up and dry. It just takes a little bit of time. Again, I always just do it overnight. And there you have it. I'm using this as a candle holder. It could be great for like jewelry. There's so many different ways that you can use this. Let me tell you, I don't really burn my candles, but if we have a power outage, I am set with candles around here. For this next project, I am taking a Dollar Tree dish towel, again, in that paisley pattern. I'm absolutely loving this pattern. And then this is just a men's tank top that I also found at Dollar Tree. You could use some fabric, you could use a different t-shirt, you could use whatever you wanted as a backing. I just really thought this color was really pretty along with this pattern of this dish towel. So for my pillow, I decided I was actually going to create two smaller pillows. And so I took my dish towel and I cut it in half by removing first the edges, the sewn edges, because I did not want that to add extra bulk when I was putting the pillow together. Because of the pattern of this dish towel, you could easily turn it into one large pillow if you choose to do that instead. Once I trimmed out my two pieces, I knew that I had 14 and a half by 12. And so that's what I needed to cut in my t-shirt as well. And so I went ahead and cut down two pieces of the t-shirt in order to match up with the two pieces of my dish towel. Now I did not waste the top part of this tank top. I went ahead and I cut the sides and knotted them up and gave my daughter a little bit of an 80s retro tank top to wear over another tank top because you know she's 10 and we're not showing belly but she didn't necessarily love being my model but she definitely loves this little tank top and i get questions all the time about what i do with my leftovers and so here's one example 
Back to the pillow, I'm going in with some fabric glue sticks. If you haven't seen me use these before, I absolutely love them. If you're not wanting to pull out your sewing machine, if you mush the glue, it absolutely will dry more flat than your traditional hot glue stick. I just discovered that they come in black as well, which is perfect if you are working with a darker fabric. So just like if you're gonna go in and sew these together, you wanna get the two right sides together, and then you're gonna take your hot glue gun and your fabric glue and start going around, giving yourself a quarter inch all the way around. I personally like to go in in small sections, so I go in at a little bit, push down the fabric, mush it, and then I keep going all the way around like that. On the bottom side, I make sure that I leave about three inches of an opening so that I have room to flip the fabric out as well as stuff it with my polyfill. Once your hot glue has completely set, you'll know that because it's no longer warm, you're gonna go ahead and flip your fabric to the right side so that you can now fill it with your polyfill as full as you want it. Once you have it all filled up, then you can go in with your hot glue gun and your fabric glue and close it off. Now, I like to use these clips that I picked up at Dollar Tree, but you can also use clothes pins if you have those or anything. I just like to have a little extra pinchiness to help me keep it closed while I'm working with it. I think this pillow is adorable and my kids love to grab it while they're watching a show, reading a book. It is absolutely just the perfect size pillow for them and it doesn't hurt that it matches my decor. Okay, for this next one, all you need is a picture frame and one of these placemats from Dollar Tree. I'm almost embarrassed to call this a DIY, but every time I do one of these, I always love the way that they turn out. So the easiest way to do this is to take the glass from the picture frame and I use my favorite craft knife and I just cut around to get the exact size of the placemat that I want. And then when I go stick everything back in, I always put the placemat first, then the glass because I want the weight of the glass. Now I'm doing an eight by 10 on this one. I've done 11 by 14 in the past. Either size will work. You just use what you have. I absolutely love this. Hard to believe it was only $2 because it definitely looks like it's more expensive than that. For this next project, I am using a glass vase. This is a hobnail vase that I got from Dollar Tree. If I said that wrong, please of course correct me in the comments. And I'm also using some white spray paint. I sprayed the entire vase and once the paint had completely set, I went ahead and I grabbed these three different florals that I had on hand from Dollar Tree. These are actually my absolute favorite florals that Dollar Tree carries. I love the flocking that they have on them and I just like to spread them out a little bit to make them a little bit fuller and then just stuck them right in the vase. What I love about painting these vases white is it gives them that milk glass look and I think it is absolutely beautiful and it's easy to just freshen up of space and of course you could take any vase that you probably already have lying around if you're like me I know I have at least five or six other vases just sitting around. For this next project I'm using an 8x10 stretch canvas as well as this clear colored sink mat. To start off with, I am removing the canvas from the wood. Now, I have tried to do it where I remove the staples. I can't do it without causing injury and bleeding to myself. So this time I just went in with my craft knife. I cut a round in order to just get the canvas off and I left the staples in. I found that that was just the easiest way. I did go in with my pliers and remove the extra canvas that was around just because I didn't want that extra canvas to interfere with anything else. But again, I just left the staples where they were. After that, I just kind of laid the canvas right on top or the wood on top of the clear mat to get an idea of the size of the mat that I needed and took my scissors and trimmed that down so that it would fit behind. And then I went in with my staple gun and on the same side where the staples already were, I stapled that clear sink mat right onto the wooden frame. Now, if you have any extra that is hanging off still, go ahead and trim that up. You don't want that sticking out on your edges. Once that was done, I went in with this white spray paint and I gave it a nice, easy coat of spray paint. I wanted to make sure that the clear mat was covered, but I didn't want the frame to be completely white. I wanted some of that neutral wood to be able to still pop through. 
To decorate this, I'm keeping it really easy. I'm just using the floral pick from Dollar Tree as well as some Dollar Tree wired burlap in order to create a bow. So I'm taking the burlap ribbon and I'm cutting off a fairly large piece and then just folding that in half. And then I'm taking a smaller piece and cutting that in half and that will be the tails that I will attach to the bow in just a little bit. Now I'm taking a piece of twine, just wrapping it around several times and then tying that off into a knot to secure my bow. In order to attach the tails onto my bow, I'm just using some hot glue and securing those right into the middle of the bow. And that way I get little bow tails onto the bow. After that, I go in with a piece of twine. I doubled it up and I added some hot glue and that is how I will be attaching this to the mat, I guess that's the best way to put it. So I added a little bit of hot glue onto the flower in order to attach the bow to that. And then I'm sticking the twine through the holes and then tying that off into a bow. Cause I didn't want to tie it into a knot that way if I wanted to take this off, then I could easily take this off and then use this again later for something else. After I did that, I wanted to dovetail my ends by just cutting at an angle. I always think that is a nice added touch. And there you have a super cute, this is definitely really farmhousey, but I love it. I think it is darling. It is really fresh and bright and white. I adore this. If you are looking for some more inspiration or a distraction, here is another video for you to check out right here. I would love to know which of these is your favorite. Leave that for me in the comments below. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, I would love to have you as part of this DIY family and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.